Thanks to Squarespace for sponsoring today's video. Today we're going to look at one of my favorite subjects, which is that of Lie algebras. And in fact, what we'll do is look at the well-known operation of the cross product and see how it can be written as a more familiar Lie algebra. Okay, so let's recall what the cross product does maybe qualitatively first. So it takes two vectors and you think about those two vectors as spanning a plane. If those two vectors are parallel, then something else happens, which I won't go into here. And then what the cross product does is it produces a vector which is perpendicular to the plane which is spanned by those two vectors. Okay, but what does that mean algebraically? Well, algebraically we have the following formulation. So this three-dimensional vector, ABC, cross with this three-dimensional vector, EFG, is equal to this new three-dimensional vector. So notice the first entry is BG minus CF, the second entry is CE minus AG, and the third entry is AF minus BE. And you can come up with these entries just by imposing that condition that this output should be perpendicular to each of these inputs. But we won't do that here. I will review some properties that the cross product has. And these properties would be generally proven or given as exercises in a multivariable calculus class. The first is that it's a bilinear operation. The second is a certain skew symmetry, so that means it's anti-commutative. If we take V cross W, you get the negative of W cross V. Sometimes this is illustrated by something called the right-hand rule. And then finally, we've got this nice property which is called the Jacobi identity. And this is like often an exercise in one of those classes and not really presented during the class. And that has to do with the non-associativity of the cross product. So let's see what we have. We have u cross v cross w plus w cross u cross v plus v cross w cross u is equal to zero. So these three things together make the R3, three-dimensional vectors with real entries, and the cross product into something called a Lie algebra. And that brings us to the problem of this video. The problem is that most Lie algebras, I'll put that in quotes, are represented by a set of matrices where our operation is this commutator. So in other words, we have a matrix A and a matrix B, and we define this bracket a, B minus B, A, and that would be the operation for the Lie algebra of matrices. Whereas over here, the operation for the Lie algebra of these three dimensional vectors is this cross product. So what we'd like to do is maybe take this cross product setup and write it as a more familiar Lie algebra, and that is like a matrix Lie algebra. And now how can we get started doing that? Well, we'll start with the fact that this is a bilinear map. And so since this is a bilinear map, if we fix some vector V in R3, then we have a nice linear transformation from R3 to R3 defined by left cross product multiplication by V. So I'll write it like this. So V cross blank is a linear map from R3 to R3. So let's write that here. This is a linear transformation. But one thing that we know is that any linear transformation can be described as multiplication by a matrix. And so that's especially true when we have here a, a finite dimensional vector space. And in this case, since we've got a three dimensional vector space and a three dimensional vector space, we should be able to write this left cross product by V as multiplication by a three by three matrix. Okay, so let's maybe say that V is equal to the matrix A, B, C, just to get started. And then we want to look at the cross product of V with an arbitrary vector. So let's maybe call that arbitrary vector X, Y, Z. So we're looking at the cross product of ABC with X, Y, Z. 
So just kind of replacing parts over here, that's going to give us the following vector. So we have BZ minus CY is the first entry, CX minus AZ is the second entry, and AY minus BX is the third entry. And so let's recall again, just to be careful, that this guy right here, this ABC is fixed, whereas this thing right here is variable. Because that's coming from our domain and then this is the output here. So like I said, this should be able to be represented by a matrix. So we should have a three by three matrix times this variable vector x, y, z that will achieve the same output here. But it's not too hard to figure out what this matrix is just by looking at the entries of this vector. So notice there's nothing attached to x in the first entry. So that means this first entry in the first row here must be zero. Keeping in mind how we do matrix multiplication by taking the first row and swiveling it into the first column. Then we see that the number attached to y is negative c. That puts a negative c here. And then the number attached to z is b. That puts a b here. Then we can go ahead and go on all the way down for the second row and the second entry, the third row, and this third entry. Let's see what that leaves us with. So that'll leave us with a C here, a zero here, and a minus A here. Just keeping in mind that if we swivel this second row into that column vector and kind of multiply the overlaps and add up, we'll get that second entry. And then finally here, we'll have, let's see negative B, A, zero. So I think what's interesting about this is that this is a so-called skew symmetric matrix, but the word skew symmetric is given to this matrix and given to this property over here. So there's something going on there. Furthermore, the collection of all such matrices come from the matrix Lie algebra, which is called SO3. So that's the special orthogonal um, three-dimensional Lie algebra. So this observation gives us some sort of idea for how we should define our map. Well, it tells us which Lie algebra should be on the right-hand side, and it hopefully tells us what should happen to each three vector. So perhaps each three vector should be mapped to that three by three matrix. So in other words, what we'll end up with is phi goes from R3 thought of as a Lie algebra with the cross product to SO3, thought of as a Lie algebra or a matrix Lie algebra with the commutator. And what happens? Well, this sends ABC to this three by three matrix. Okay, so let's start the next board with the definition of this map and then we'll prove that it is a Lie algebra isomorphism. And what I mean by a Lie algebra isomorphism is that you can factor the appropriate operations through the map. Okay, so let's do that. I've been using Squarespace for my personal academic website for several years and I couldn't be happier with the experience. It's super easy to achieve a beautiful result using wonderful templates that allow for drag and drop design. Squarespace also makes it very straightforward to access the source code if you want further customization, like the LaTeX integration that you can see on my website. I'm currently on my annual summer rock climbing trip and I've been using the Squarespace mobile app to check in on my site. This app is very well designed and not only allows you to check analytics, but also features website building tools in app. Personally, I'm considering resurrecting my old climbing blog using this feature. So keep on the lookout for that. So what are you waiting for? Go check out squarespace.com for a free trial. And when you're ready to launch, go to squarespace.com slash Michael Penn to save 10% off your first purchase of a website or a domain. And one more time, I'd like to thank Squarespace for sponsoring today's video. So far, we've motivated the definition of the following map. So it goes from R3, so three vectors, to SO3. So those are three by three skew symmetric matrices. And it takes the three vector ABC to the three matrix defined like this. So zero minus CB, C zero minus A, minus B, A zero. And now we'd like to check 
like that, if we take phi of the cross product of V and W, we get the commutator of phi of V and phi of W. So let's recall this cross product turns R3 into a Lie algebra, and this commutator turns SO3 into a Lie algebra. So this is like our ability to factor out phi in terms of the Lie algebra operation on the left-hand side with respect to the Lie algebra operation on the right-hand side. Okay, so let's get going here. We'll start by introducing some notation. So let's say V is equal to our vector a, b, c. Let's say w is equal to our vector e, f, g. So that means that phi of v cross w will be equal to phi of, well, we need to use this formula over here for v cross w. So we have b, g minus c, f, c, e minus a, g, a, f minus b, e. Okay, so now let's quickly replace that with the appropriate three by three matrix. Okay, there, we've got that on the board now. Now we're gonna calculate this right-hand side, this commutator. So that'll be phi of v, phi of w, so in brackets. So recall that means phi of v times phi of w minus phi of w times phi of v. But in terms of our matrices, that's gonna be zero minus c, b, and then c, zero minus a, and then minus B, A, zero. So that's our first matrix. And then zero minus G, F, G, zero minus E, and minus F, E, zero. So that's our se second matrix. And then we need to subtract the opposite order multiplication here. So that's gonna give us zero minus G, F, G zero minus E minus F E zero. And then finally over here, zero minus C B, C zero minus A, and then finally minus B, A zero. So there we have that. So next we just need to do the product of these two matrices versus the product of those two matrices and then take the difference. So let's get that written on the board real quick. Okay, so that's what we get after doing all of those matrix multiplications. And so a lot, a lot is going on here, but if we look at it carefully, we'll notice that everything that needs to cancel will cancel. So notice this minus CG minus BF term is the same in those first two entries. We've got a minus sign between the matrices, so that means this guy cancels with that guy. Similarly, this term will cancel with this term. And then finally, this term will cancel with this term. And now we just have to add up everything that's not on the diagonal. So notice here we'll have BE minus AF, but that's exactly what we have right here. So that's good news. And then here we have CE minus AG. That's exactly what we have right here. Over here we have CF minus BG, which is exactly what we have right here. So everything is working out. And then I'll let you guys check the last three entries work as well. So in the end, taking this commutator is the same thing as taking the pr cross product and then applying the map, which means that this equation holds, which is exactly what we needed to do to push this Lie algebra of the cross product into the Lie algebra of special orthogonal matrices. And that's a good place to stop. Music